I bless you to all my family in Chicago, all my family in Seattle, Washington, all my family in Texas County, Arkansas, Texas County, Texas, uh, Little Rock, Arkansas, North Little Rock, Sherwood, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, all over the great United States. We thank God for allowing us to be here this morning. Everybody say, welcome. Welcome. We're expecting our great God to do great things for us, great power and great grace. He's worthy of praise. He's worthy of honor. He's worthy of glory today. God has been good to us. Has God been good to you? Amen. Got my income tax. Hey! <laughs> That's always a blessing to get your income tax back, isn't it? So we give God the praise. We thank him for uh, uh, having some income tax to come back. Our country could be bankrupt right now, but we're not. God gave us another year. Hopefully we don't go bankrupt. I hope Mr. Obama and them can turn it around. But, you know, we hope and pray that they do. Well, we're going to get right into the word. Everybody say the word. The word. There's no mystery where I'm coming from, is it? There is no mystery because I've already told you the Lord has put on my heart to stay in the book of Proverbs. It looks like our nation and our society is crumbling from the lack of wisdom. There's just foolishness upon foolishness upon foolishness. Three people are doing things foolishly without thinking, I think. Sometimes we have to pause and think about things before we do them. Now, for some reason, my we got a new computer here, but it's not flipping off on the scriptures so we can read them. Uh, I don't know why, it's just a technology glitch. Everybody say glitch. Glitch. We got glitches all over the place. But that's okay. We're going to go ahead and broadcast the word. You just won't be able to see the scriptures today. Uh, there's a little problem. You all forgive us. But we thank you for logging in. We know you could have been to millions of other sites out there. But God put it in your heart to be with us today, and we thank you for it. We hope and pray that God will give us something today that will encourage you, that will strengthen you, that will motivate you, that will help you. Keep fighting the good fight of faith. Don't give up. Keep on holding on. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Just keep holding on. Sure, the truth hurts us sometimes. Sure, the truth cuts us sometimes. But the truth comes to make us free. We got to hear it. Amen. Everybody say, hear it. Hear it. We got to hear it. Don't be offended by the truth. Hear it and be delivered. So we're coming out of, today is Sunday, February 23rd, 2014, and my name is Elder Tony Hyman, for those of you who don't know me. Now, one guy, girl I had in my class was from Mexico, and she saw one of my cards. And she said, Mr. Hyman, your first name is Elder? Your first name is Elder? And the kids just started laughing at other students. No, that's a title. Elder is a title. It's not my first name. It's a title. Uh, it's called Elder. When you go through and get your minister's license or whatever, you and take the class, you get promoted to an elder's position or a title. And that's my title, Elder Tony Hyman. And this is Strong Town Apostolic Ministries Incorporated, located at 713 North J.P. Ryan Luke Road in Jacksonville, Arkansas, 72076. Our source is the Olive Tree Bible Reader, the King James Version of the Bible. Again, I have nothing against any other version of the Bible. I just love the King James Version. No offense. Uh, we're live streaming right now on www.ustream.tv. And uh, the title of today's message is Keep My Words. Let's say it together. Keep My Words. Not my words, but his words. Talking about our creator. The one who designed you. The one who designed me, keep his words. His words are words of power. His words are words of deliverance. His words are words of encouragement. His words are words of authority. Did you know that? Keep my words. Our subtopic is no mystery. We're preaching deliverance. Everybody say deliverance. 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 We're focusing on the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. We're putting him first. Preaching deliverance. God's people need to be delivered. Do you agree? We need to be delivered. Delivered from what? 
Well, whatever it is that's bound, that God is bound, right? God wants us free. Preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind. And we've got a new sign out there, Strong Tower Church of Jesus Christ. That's who this church belongs to. Not Elder Hyman, but the Lord Jesus Christ. Keep my words. Everybody say this with me. Make my heart clean in 2014. Keep my heart clean in 2014. That is our theme for this year. Make my heart clean in 2014. And if it's already clean, keep my heart clean in 2014. God knows what's in the heart, doesn't he? He knows all our heart. So we just ask him, give it to him. He says, son and daughter, give me thy heart. Do you give it to him today? I give it my heart. I give it my soul. I give it my mind. And I give him my strength. We're coming out of the book of James. This is like the Proverbs of the New Testament. James chapter 1, verses 5 through 8. Chapter 3, verses 15 through 17. And we're going, we made it up to chapter 7 of the book of Proverbs. we got 31 chapters we're going to do. I feel like the Lord has placed it in my spirit to stay right there in Proverbs. All 31 chapters. One chapter at a time. Amen? Because my heart is torn when I see this lack of wisdom. All this senseless killing. Senseless. Our conclusion will come out of Acts chapter 2, verses 36 through 38. Luke chapter 7, verse 27 through 30, which is the same. And he put on my heart to go into Acts chapter 19, verses 1 through 6 today. Acts chapter 19, verses 1 through 6. All right, we're going to get started now. So uh, we'll go to the source here. It's right here if you need to see where the scriptures are. We're coming out of James chapter number 1 and verse 5. But you can bring out the scriptures there if you need to see them. All right, um, I'm sorry you all are not able to view the scriptures with us today. But like I said, we got a glitch this morning. The adversary is attacking our equipment. And there seems to be nothing I can do about it but just say, loose your devil. And God rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus off of our equipment. But until he does, just bear with us. Amen? All right, we're coming out of the book of James, chapter 1 and verse 5. And he says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. They give it to all men liberally and upbraid it not. And it shall be given him. Let him ask in faith, nothing wavereth. For he that wavereth is like a, a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he wishes to receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man or woman is unstable in all his or her ways. We don't want to be double-minded, do we? We want to have a single purpose, to draw closer to the Lord, to exalt his name. Do you agree? We have to overcome the spirit of double-mindedness. And I think that may be a plague in the body of Christ. A lot of double-minded people out there want to be this and want to be that. Don't know which way to go. Confusion. Double-mindedness is a state of confusion. Do you agree? I don't know which way, what I want to do. Confused. Where well, we rebuke the spirit of confusion in the name of Jesus. We rebuke the spirit of double-mindedness in the name of Jesus. Father, give a singleness of mind, a single purpose to do your will, to sing your praise, to exalt his name. Now let's go to James chapter 3. And I forgot what verse it is. What verse is it? Uh, verse 15. James chapter 3, verse 15. We probably about got this memorized, don't we? Because I'm going to stay right there talking about the wisdom that's from above. It says, this wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. That's the wisdom that's in the world, right? That's the wisdom we all were a part of by default. We're born with earthly wisdom. We're born with sensual wisdom. We're born with devilish wisdom. 
That's why we have to be born again. Because we get this wisdom by default. Do you agree? We're born this way. And so we spend a lifetime trying to get this wisdom that's from above. It says, for this wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion, double-mindedness, and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above. Everybody say, wisdom from above. Wisdom from above. That's what we're looking for. Amen. It says, this wisdom from above, that, that is wisdom, excuse me, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. I'm sad to say we're not seeing this wisdom from above in our society, especially when 15-year-old girls are getting shot in the head. That just happened last week, didn't it? Having her funeral, I think, tomorrow. Why was she shot in the head? You know, Sister Chloe, why? Throwing eggs at her neighbor's house, uh, doing something to a star, pulling a, a prank. I don't know the exact details. All the news said is she's pulling a prank on the neighbor's son. But the neighbor's son's dad had a gun. And the neighbor's son's dad came out the door shooting the gun. Boom, 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 at random. And she got hit with a bullet in the head. That's very sad, isn't it? But these are foolish circumstances. These are the things that I'm talking about. That's what's going on in our society. We've got young people left and right who are dying over foolishness. Foolishness is just destroying a generation of our young people. And there seems to be nothing I can do. Every time I talk about it, I start getting emotional. I start, start about crying because I feel so helpless. Some of the young men that I try to talk to in my classroom, and they see me as their enemy. Why do you see me as your enemy, son? I'm not, I'm not your enemy. I want you to be successful. I want you to make it. I want you to overcome. I want you, because you're my future. That's what I tell them. I say, you are my future. You are my future. I don't want my future to be destroyed, self-destructing. And it, I become emotional because <coughs> I seem to be doing absolutely no good. That's the way it seems. But I'm going to keep trying. Everybody say, keep trying. Keep trying. Hey, I may not reach them all, but I might reach one. I might reach two. I might. I don't know. But I'm not gonna give up. Everybody say, don't give up. Don't give up. Y'all preach to me a little while. Say, don't give up. Don't give up. Hey, thank you. I won't give up. <laughs> Sometimes the preacher needs to be preached to. That's called feedback. And I'm gonna tell you, don't give up. Because we've got to reach this generation the best we can. And like I said before, I don't believe Dr. Martin Luther King will be pleased with what he's saying. I really don't. I'm going to just be honest and tell the truth. I'm, I'm sure you would be pleased with the fact that we can be the president. We can, we can get positions. We can, we can move up the ladder. But I don't think he would be pleased with our morality, with the things that our people are doing, the things that our children, our young people are doing. I don't think Dr. King will be pleased with our progress. Do you? I don't think he'd be pleased to see our young men on the streets selling drugs like they are to, to get by when we got people in the White House. I don't think he'd be pleased to see some of our young women out there selling their body to, to, to make a living. I don't think he'd be pleased to see some of our young women uh, with all the children that they're having without fathers in the home because they're either locked up in prison or they're killed. And they don't even know the word of God. I just don't think Dr. King would be pleased with that. He would be pleased to see Mr. Obama as president. Wait, wait, we made progress in that area. But what about the self-destructive things that we're doing as a people? Somebody's got to speak out about it. Do you agree? Or just let us continue to self-destruct. I think we've got to speak the truth because it's the truth 
that will make us free. The truth doesn't come to hurt us. The truth comes to deliver us. So I think the book of Proverbs will deliver us if we'll follow it. Do you agree? All right, well, let's get into it. I want to go to, let's see, go back over here. Where do we need to go now? Uh, verse number 17, I read that. Proverbs chapter 7. Proverbs chapter 7. I'm trying to click this one more time and see if our viewers can see our scriptures as well. Uh, no, it's not going to let them see it. So, so be it. I bought a brand new computer to get rid of the glitches, but I think I got more glitches than my son's computer. <laughs> and I used it for two years almost. All right, we're in verse, chapter number seven, starting in verse number one. Those of you who are logging in, we're in Proverbs chapter seven, verse one. I do apologize that you're not able to read them with us today, uh, but look them up in your scriptures. It says, my son, everybody say, my son. My son. And my daughter too. Keep my words. That's where I got it from. Keep my words. Now we're gonna look at this as our heavenly father today, speaking to us. My son and my daughter, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Let's let our heavenly Father speak to us today. Is that all right? Say, speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Thy servant listens. My son and my daughter, too, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Verse 2. Keep my commandments and do what? Live. Live. And my law as the apple of thy eye. See, our Creator, our Heavenly Father says, if you keep my commandments, you will live. That's where the foolishness comes in. We're not keeping our Heavenly Father's commandments. Not all of us as a whole. I'm talking about our self-destructive side. When we stop keeping our Father's commandments, that's when we start to self-destruct. Do you agree or disagree? When we stop following God's words, the inventor of our soul, the inventor of our body, the inventor of our life, he invented us. And when we don't follow the instructions of the inventor, which we call our creator, we self-destruct. If you buy a brand new automobile and they give you a big old thick book that comes with that automobile, don't they? And that book gives us instructions on how to maintain that vehicle, how to service that vehicle, when we should get it serviced, have the brakes changed, the oil changed, and various other things. They suggest we do. They don't make us do it, do they? I don't have to change that oil if I don't want to. I don't have to get those brake service if I don't want to. I don't have to do the things that the inventor said do. And when I don't do those things, what happens to my automobile? It breaks down. When it breaks down, it is a form of self-destruction, isn't it? I didn't do the things that were suggested to be done by the creator of that automobile, by the inventor of that automobile. And when I fail to do those things, I suffer the consequences. I can be away from home and it breaks down, or I can be at home and it breaks down. Because when it breaks down, it breaks down without warning. Because the creator has warned us through his word. The inventor of that automobile has warned us through that booklet he gave us, didn't he? He said, if you don't do this, such and such and such might happen. You'll have problems. The automobile, if you want good service, you have to maintain it. Well, it's the same with us. We are created beings. We are created. We were invented by the person who wrote this book, the person who inspired this book, I would say, our Heavenly Father. And he is saying, keep my law and live. This is the recipe of life. This is the recipe of a good life, a saved life, an anointed life. This is the recipe that God gave us to survive. And then leave this world and come home with him. Now it goes on to say, 
Bind them upon the fingers of thine. Bind them upon thy fingers. Write them upon the table of thine what? Heart. heart. That's why God says, Son, give me thine heart. Let my words get in your heart. Follow my words in your heart. If it's not in your heart, you're not going to do it. If it's not in your heart, you're not going to follow it. Do you agree? It's got to be in your heart. Because out of the abundance of the heart, speak it forth the mouth. Verse number four. Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman. You need to start talking to wisdom. Oh, you're my sister. So God's word is my life. But his wisdom is my sister, and understanding is it's my kinswoman. My sister and my kinswoman will protect me. My sister and my kinswoman will lead me. My sister and my kinswoman love me. You don't find too many mothers out there that don't love their children. Now, I'm not saying that all mothers love their children, but I tell you what, God puts something in a mother, she'll fight a bear with her children. Go up against the bear, a little five foot two woman, the bear eight foot, she fighting it. Because he got her baby. Now that's some, something God put in a woman, isn't it? Us men would probably I'm going to get a gun, so I'll be back. <laughs> but woman out there crying and scratching and fighting for that baby. Us <laughs> men would probably, they said on the Titanic, it was the men that jumped into the boat. They, they threw some of the women and children behind them and jumped in the boat. That was awful. But that was history. That's what some of those men did that were on the Titanic when it was sinking. They got on the boats before the women and children did. It. Some of the men. So some of us men are terrible. Some of us men will be like a woman. We'll fight for our children. I want to be that kind. Fight for my children. But God put something in a mama. <laughs> so he said, call thy call wisdom thy sister. Wisdom will fight for you. Wisdom will, will, will protect you. Wisdom will deliver you. Wisdom will do just like a mama will do. Deliver you from that bear if you follow it. So he said, wisdom is thy sister and call understanding thy kin's woman. I think that's why God called it a, a woman and not a man. He's related to women because he put something in a woman. that will fight for her children. I mean, fight a bear. <laughs> no, she can't beat it, but she out there crying because God put a powerful love. I'm not saying all women are like that, but a majority of them are. It's a minority that are not. It's, it's more of them that have that in them that don't. So he's calling wisdom that sister. Say so wisdom. Wisdom. You're my sister. You're my sister. Understanding? Understanding? You're my kinswoman. You're my kinswoman. Uh-huh. Because you're going to fight for me. <laughs> you're going to fight for me. Okay, going on. Verse number five. That they keep thee from the strange woman. See, I told you not all women out there are, are good women, aren't they? Now, we're going to look at this from both perspectives. Everybody say they picked on the women. They picked on the women. They kind of picked on the women in the scriptures a little bit. So what we want to align is and let them know that, hey, a man can be strange too, not just women. Do you agree? So we're going to look at this from both angles, not just a strange woman. We're not going to pick on the women today because the scripture says a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. A woman that feareth the Lord shall be praised. It says that they may keep thee from the strange woman, and we'll say strange man too. Strange man too. From the stranger which flattereth with her words. From the stranger which flattereth with his words. God wants to keep us from that individual that speaks flattery. They say nice things, positive words, but they don't mean it. Those nice, positive things they say are a trap. Can you say trap? Trap. A trap. Click on the word flattery. What is flattery? 
we don't want to be confused by the flattery. Flattery comes from the Hebrew word halak. And it means to be smooth. She can be smooth. He can be smooth. Brother Corey said last week, got game. Remember that, Brother Corey? I watched that on the internet, and, and we just broke out in laughter. It, it caught it, too. He said, you ain't got no game. <laughs> that means being smooth, don't it? Isn't that what it means, being smooth? So it works both ways with men and women. Because a man can be just as smooth as a woman can be. It says, by implication, as smooth as stones were used for lots to a point or portion or separate, to deal, distribute, to divide, flatter, give, part, take away a portion, receive, separate, sell, smoother, divide, flatter. Keep going, because I think it's just repeating itself now. To plunder. You see, sometimes when somebody's got something smooth to say, they want to plunder you. Do you understand what plunder means? Take advantage of. You ever been taken advantage of before? Being taken advantage of is not a good feeling, is it? When somebody takes advantage of you, it makes you feel, it makes you feel like you have been used. And nobody likes to be used, do they? Anybody like to be used? No, none of us likes to be used. So we don't want to be plundered. But that person that's speaking smooth can start using you if you're not careful. So the book of Proverbs, wisdom, teaches us how not to be plundered. All right, go back to the list. To divide a portion, I think it's just saying the same thing here. Slippery, deceitful. To flatter. All right, go back to it. It says, from the stranger which flattereth with her words. So I'm telling my 13-year-old son out there, son, there are some women that can talk smooth to you. We gotta tell our sons that. Brother Cornelius, there are some women that can talk smooth to you. See, we got school teachers that have children. I, I, I think I saw this on 2020. She had four or five children and ended up Get with her 13-year-old elementary school or middle school student. Left her husband, her four children, or however many it was, I forget exactly how many it was, and had this boy convinced they were in love. She went to prison behind it. Got out of prison and they got married. He was old enough to get married by then. But he was a 13-year-old in middle school. So we gotta tell our young young boys now, hey, hey, if your teacher, whether male or female, is talking the wrong talk, let your parent know about it. Tell your parent. Because they shouldn't be talking about how <coughs> good looking you are or how how they want to be with you or whatever else. They shouldn't be talking that way. So we got to tell our male children and our female children the same thing. Because when we got this happening, I mean it's happening more and more and more. Not just as male teachers are falling, but female teachers are falling too. Now why you have four children and you want to marry a child? What's wrong with your mind, teacher? And she's not the only one. I mean, it's happening left and right, right and left. Just happened over here in Little Rock. One of the mothers, they, they have some kind of uh, a gymnast school. And one of the mothers got hooked up with one of the gymnasts. 13 year old gymnast student want to shut the woman's business down because one of the parents got hooked up with one of the 13-year-old, 14-year-old male students. So it's 
The Bible is true. Women can fall just like men can fall. So, son, Cornelius, David, be careful. Be careful. Watch out for the flattery of her words. And Chloe, Krista, David, I mean Courtney, watch out for your male counterparts. They can be smooth too. Teachers should not be talking about children getting hooked up like adults. We got to start talking this kind of talk now. For some reason, it's like our society is becoming foolish. Now, isn't that foolish? You're married, four or five children, and you want to marry a child. That's foolish. So what, what is happening to our society? We're rejecting the teachings of our Creator. And when we start rejecting the teachings of our Creator, we start doing foolish things. Do you agree? Foolish things. Now it says, verse number six, for I look through my through the window of my house. Uh, so for at the window of my house, I look through my casement. Kind of like this. At the window of my house. I looked through my casement, and I saw a young man, and beheld among the simple ones, I discerned among the youth, a young man, or we can say woman too, void of understanding. In other words, they had been taught these words from their creator. They had been warned about the flatterers out there. They had been warned about the smooth talkers out there. I looked through my casement and I saw it. It's just like us. We're looking at some of our students and children self-destructing. We're seeing it. Don't you see it? We're looking at it. We're looking at it on TV. We're looking at it in our society. We're looking at it in the schools. I looked through the window of my casement, and I beheld among the simple ones. I discerned among the youth a young man void of understanding, or a young woman void of understanding. Click on the word void. What does that mean, void? If we're not taught understanding, remember, understanding is our kinswoman. Wisdom is our sister. And them girls fighting for us. Them women fighting for us. Wisdom is fighting for us. Understanding is fighting for us. She's fighting for us, trying to deliver us from the flatterers, trying to deliver us from the smooth talkers, trying to deliver us from those who take advantage of us, trying to deliver us. If we will listen. Now, here's a young man who didn't have that. It says lacking, comes from the Hebrew word hazar, hazar. And it means hence, without, destitute, fail, lack, have need, void, want. All right, that's enough. They don't have it in need, in want of. We see it every day. And it seems like I say I get very emotional looking at it because there's nothing I seem to can do about it. I tell them about wisdom, but they reject it. And when you reject wisdom, when you reject the words of your creator, you self-destruct. All right, let's go on. Verse number eight. Passing through the street near her corner, and he went the way to her house. Or passing through the street near his corner. Remember, we're doing it both ways. Because women can be taken advantage of just like males can. So we're looking at it from both angles. Passing through the street near his corner, passing through the street near her corner, and he or she went the way to her house, went the way to his house. In the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and soul of heart. See, young man, watch out for that. Be careful. See, we're known by what we wear, right? It says she had on the attire. Click on attire. Attire means what you're wearing. The attire of what? The attire of an harlot. 
and it says the dress, all right? A dress. Comes from the Hebrew word sa'it, and it means a dress. Well, I thought holy women wore dresses. Well, we probably want to say half a dress. <laughs> Because she was dressed in the attire of a harlot, that's put on a dress, the attire of garment, a garment attire. So she was wearing half a dress. <laughs> you can wear a dress and you can wear a half a dress, right? So if you dress as a harlot, click on harlot. Now, remember, we're looking at this from both angles. Because a man can be dressed seductively too. Do you agree? Look at it from both ends. We're not just picking on women today. We wanted both our children, male and female. But but Solomon, the writer of this proverb, was one of his sons. Sons, be careful. Not every woman out there has good intentions for you. And it says, Zana, highly fed and therefore wanted to commit adultery usually of the female and less often simple fornication, rarely of involuntary ravishment to commit idolatry, the Jewish people being regarded as a spouse of YHWH, cause to commit fornication, continually break, play the harlot, cause to play, play the W-H-O-R-E, commit, fall, whoredom, abhorring, and so on and so forth. That's pretty gruesome, isn't it? But it works both ways. Now, when I was my son's age, I'm going to just tell the truth. I wasn't in the church. So I was looking for that kind of woman. Where is she at? And when they tell me there was one, I, I go try to find it. But they're out there. There are some women that like young, young boys. <laughs> young men. Teenagers. So teenagers, beware. Beware. And, and should that be in the church? It should be in the church, should it? But he's talking to church folk. This is in the Bible we're reading. We've got to warn our children. Warn them. Son, if a woman comes on to you the wrong way, you tell dad about it. And we'll straighten that out. Don't do like dad did to try to tell you. I wouldn't talk this. And do you know there's a lot of children that are corrupted in the prison now because they've gotten corruption? Being corrupted, they call it contributing to the delinquency of a minor. You ever heard that before? Because young boys, she can put something on you. <laughs> you think you have nothing. I read all the time about how that happens and she wants her husband killed, and guess who she has to do it? That young boy, he, he, that she's going to be in my future, and she has her husband killed by that young boy because he thinks he's in love. She don't put something on <laughs> And he thinks he's in love, and he do anything she say. <laughs> so Solomon, the writer of this, is warning God's people. See, God don't want his children destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So we've got to warn them. Amen? Do you agree? We've got to warn them. Now it says, if the whole of men him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. Subtle means sneaky. Click on soul. It means sneaky. That's what we call sneaky. Do y'all know there are some sneaky people out there? Sneaky men and sneaky women. Now, this scripture here is picking on the women. But there are sneaky men, too. And we're seeing it all the time. Young girls tell me all the time. Just had one of my students in the hospital over stuff. She told me stuff I can't even say right now. Over the air. I can't even say what happened to her. That she shared with me. So it's not just women, it's men too. Leave the children alone. Amen. Do you agree? Leave them alone, my children. Leave them alone. Next song. It says to guard in a good sense, protect, maintain, obey, or bear to conceal. 
the siege, a hidden thing, a keeper, mo mo monument, observer, subtle, watcher, keep, preserve, the siege. I thought it had subtle, hidden things, watchers to guard. I think it's just repeating now, continue on now. To keep secret. That's what it means by being sneaky. Keep secrets. And that's the that's one of the things that it's going to be your secret. It's going to be our little secret. Be careful when people try to get you to keep secrets. Children, when an adult is trying to keep you to keep a secret, it's because there's something they want to do that they will get them in trouble if they knew about it. So be careful when somebody trying to get you to keep secrets. We have to warn our children. Do you agree? Because we're trying to protect them. Remember, wisdom is your kids is your sister. Understanding is your kids woman. They're fighting for you. They're trying to protect you from the flatterer. They're trying to protect you from the molesters. They're trying to protect you from the abusers. They're trying to protect you. And we need to preach this all across the land because people are falling prey to these abusers. I know it's not something that will get us up and shouting and hooping and hollering, but it's got to be preached. It's got to be taught because it's an epidemic. Contributing to the delinquency of a minor is epidemic in the United States. Somebody's got to be bold enough to speak about it and say, let our children alone. Leave them alone. Train them up in the way that they should go. Train them up in the Lord. Train them up with wisdom. Train them up with understanding. Train them up the right way. Hey! And our country will be blessed. But unfortunately, I don't know why people aren't preaching it and teaching it. I don't know. I do know one thing. I can say this because it was on the news. In the Catholic Church, a lot of those people were guilty of being the molesters of little boys and little girls, and the bishops covering it up. The higher people knew it and sent them to another church. They didn't damage that, took them to another. They didn't. What is this? Why would you cover up a pedophile? Why would you cover up a molester? Why would you cover this thing up? That's foolish! Isn't it? That's why I say our society is suffering from a lack of wisdom. Suffering! Because we want to tell people what they want to hear, but we need to tell them what they need to hear, which is the truth. Leave our children alone. Train them up in the way that they should go. Wisdom is fighting for our children this morning. Can you see them fight? Understanding is fighting for our children this morning. She's fighting that bear of pedophilia. She's fighting that bear of, of molestation. She's fighting that bear of abuse. She's fighting this morning. Can you see her fighting? She's fighting for her children, but somebody's got to speak it. If we don't speak it, she can't fight. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Amen. God bless you, Sister Wages. Welcome. Yes. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. We've got to speak the word. We've got to proclaim the word because we're fighting for our children. This is the only way we can fight. Because we don't know who the molesters are. We don't know who the pedophiliacs are. We don't know who these stubborn, loud and stubborn people are. Do we? But we can warn our children. And God can protect them. Wisdom can protect them. Understanding can protect them. They know better. Amen? When you don't know better, you can't do better, can you? Verse number 11. She is loud. He is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. His feet abide not in his house. Remember, it's both ways. We're warning both our children, girls and boys. We're not just picking on the women. Because there's some bad men out there, too. Terrible. Awful. Verse 12. Now the 
as she was without, now as she was without, now in the streets, now is he without, now in the streets. He's in the streets. There's no safety in the streets. Stay out of the streets, children. Stay at home. Get out of the street. The street is not safety. The street is not security. The pedophiliacs hang out in the street. The evil doers hang out in the street. Be careful what you find in the streets. Now, this was written thousands of years ago. Are the streets any safer today? No. So keep our children out the streets. And lie in wait at every corner. Verse 13. So she called him and kissed him and with an impudent face said unto him, with a serious face. She called him and she kissed him and with a serious face she said, I have paid my peace offerings. I have my peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vows. In other words, she said, I went to church and then I put my offering in. So she made him think that he was, she was a church-going woman. He made her think that he was a church-going man. See, it works both ways. So the child think it's all right now. He I paid my vows. I put in my offering. See, they, they had to do sacrifices back then. So just because a person's going to church don't make them holy. <laughs> you hear me? Just because the church is going to church, person is going to church and paying their vows doesn't make them love the Lord. It doesn't. So we got to warn our children. Children, watch out for the pedophile. Watch out for them. This is wisdom fighting for you. This is your kids going to understand and fight for you. Hear it and obey it. Keep my words. And that's the time of our lesson. Keep my words words. Verse 15. Therefore came I forth to meet thee. This is her talking to that young boy now. Therefore came I forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. I've been looking for you all my life, David. I've been looking for you all my life, Courtney. She talking to that boy, and, and he listening. Yeah. She said it with an impudent face, with a serious face. Impudent in faith, can't you believe it? Looking at him in the eye, or he looking at her, telling her those sweet words. You hear me? It works both ways, not just male and female. It works both. Therefore came I forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy faith. You so good looking. You so handsome. You so pretty. And I have found thee. Now look where she goes, verse 16. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works, with fine linen of Egypt. Now why are you telling a young boy this? Why are you telling a young girl? See, you're talking about something they shouldn't be talking about. So when somebody grow up talking to you about something you shouldn't be talking about, walk away. Get away from it. Don't, don't, don't listen to any more of it. She started talking about something she shouldn't be talking about. No grown-up should be talking about to a child about the bedroom and what they got in the bedroom. You see, kids, what the wisdom is fighting here? How many of you heard this preach before? Let me see a show of hands. You heard this preach before? I have begged my bed. This is how they get them. This is how they're trapping our children. This is how the pedophiliacs are trapping them. Talking smooth to them. Talking about things they shouldn't talk about, they say it's our secret. Oh, no secret. You see, we're talking about secret. So sneaky. Sneaky people. But the word is going to expose them. The word is going to bring it out. The word is going to deliver some children. The word is going to help some children. Son, keep my words. Daughter, keep my words. See, faith comes by hearing, and hearing comes from the word of God. Keep the word. The word will deliver you. The word will fight for you. The word will help you. The word will send that pedophiliac running. This boy knows too much. You better get away from it. This girl knows too much. I won't get in trouble. The word will send them running. You 
shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. See, because I want my young brothers to be free. I want my young sisters to be free. I don't want their minds corrupted. I don't want their minds and bodies corrupted by these wicked people. Whether in the church or out the church, with carved work, with fine linen of Egypt, I have perfumed my bed with myrrh and emeralds and cinnamon. It smells good. Come on, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves. Look how she talking to him, or look how he talking to her. Because remember, it works both ways, right? For the good man is not at home. She's married. For the good man is not at home. He has gone a long journey. He has taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the day of point. Or it could be she has gone a long way. She has taken a bag of money with her. Come, let us take our fill of loves into the morning. He's gone. My husband's gone. My wife's gone. Can't you see the sneakiness here? The Bible tells it all, doesn't it? The Lord's got it all, and the God didn't leave nothing out. He's showing us what the pedophiliac uses. He's showing us how they trap our children. He's showing us how they trap these young people. The Word will deliver you if you follow it. With her much fair speech, see? With her, or with his, much fair speech, she calls him to you. Okay, I'll come to your house. Or the little girl. Okay, I'll come over. With her much fair speech, with his much fair speech, watch out. They're clever. They're good at talking you into doing something you wouldn't want to do. Amen? Amen. With her much fair speech, she calls him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. Or with the flattering of his lips, he forced her. They're smooth, remember? Smooth. They said these pedophiliacs is something about them that the children just attracted to for some reason. They think they're fun. I, I don't know what it is, but it's something about them. I think it's spiritual, really. I think it's some spirits. And the spirits get on that child and cause them child to do, do things that they wouldn't ordinarily, ordinarily do. But we got to rebuke them spirits in the name of Jesus. Please the love of our children. Please the love of them every morning. Lord, protect them. Lord, put your body angels around about them. Don't let no spirit come on and cause them to yield to the tempter. Verse 22, he goeth after her straightway as an ox going to the slaughter, or as a fool, I told you we're talking about fools, right? Foolish things. Fool to the correction of the stumps, to a dart strike through his liver, as a bird hastens to the snare, and knoweth not, he don't even know it, that it is for his life. And she knoweth not that it is for her life. Verse 24. Hear again unto me now, therefore, all ye children. See, it's talking to both in it. Hear me, listen to me. I'm trying to fight for you. Wisdom is saying, listen. Understanding is saying, listen. Because the adversary wants to kill, still and to destroy our children. And I told you I get so emotional, feeling helpless like I can do nothing. But I'm doing my part. I'm speaking the word of God, aren't I? Amen. That's all I can do is speak the word. I can't make anybody do anything, can I? But I can warn you, I'm the watchman on the wall. I'm warning God's people. I'm warning God's children. Oh, children, hear me unto me now, therefore. Listen to me. See, it's more than just us in here. There's thousands that are watching us over the airways. And we want to protect our children, don't we? 
Verse, I told you, Solomon had a lot of them. He had to protect them. Let not thine heart, see it happens in the heart. Let not thine heart decline to her ways. Let not thine heart decline to his ways. Go not astray in her paths. Go not astray in his paths. For she hath cast down many wounded. For he hath cast down many wounded. Yea, many strong men. Yea, many strong women have been slain by her. Many strong women have been slain by him. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. His house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. Warn the children. Children, hear it to me. What's the title of our lesson? Keep my words. See, God's word is fighting for us. Do you believe that? He's right for us. We just got to hear it to him. We just got to listen to him. We just got to say, Lord, I obey. I submit to you. I resist the devil. And he must flee. In the name of Jesus, he must flee. Well, we're going to go to our conclusion. I hope you've gotten something out of this. Because I think this is what's missing. This is the missing piece of the puzzle. We're all Proverbs. We got to teach it to our children. We got to teach it to our society because we're self-destruction because of foolishness. Foolish things are causing us to self-destruct as a nation, causing us to self-destruct as a society, causing us to self-destruct. It's not the lack of knowledge in school. We can learn calculus one, calculus two, calculus three, differential equation. All kinds of things we learn in school. But where is wisdom? You ever heard a class on wisdom? They can't teach wisdom in a book. It has to come from God. Father, I need some wisdom. Give me some wisdom. Give me some knowledge. Give me some understanding. Now Peter says, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye crucified, both the Lord and Christ. Now, when they heard this, everybody say, heard it. Heard it. When they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? See, when you hear the word, it pricks you. When the better fathers listen today, do you think they were pricked? Ouch! He found me. Ouch! The word got me. Ouch! It pricked me. Because somebody's got to preach the truth. The truth is supposed to prick when somebody's doing wrong. Do you believe that? It's supposed to, it's supposed to be a little pain there. When you get pricked by, by a rose, but ow! That hurt. Prick. The truth will prick you. If you're not where you need to be, do you believe that? If I'm not where I need to be when I hear the truth, ow, oh, that hit me. But instead of getting mad, I said, oh, Lord, would you forgive me? See, look at what they did. Then Peter said unto them, repent, don't get mad. Repent. Father, forgive me in the name of Jesus. Father, forgive me in the name of Jesus. Father, forgive me in the name of Jesus. Don't get mad when the word pricks you. Repent when the word pricks you. Do you agree? And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. All right, let's go over to the next scripture, which is Luke chapter 7, verse 27. Then we're going to go to Acts chapter 19, verses 1 through 6. See, when you read the truth, you're supposed to repent, not get angry, right? That's the answer. That's the flesh that get angry. The truth will, Bishop Warren used to say, the truth will make you happy, glad, or fighting man. Do you believe that? 
You know what I mean? Get happy glad. Hey, that hit me. That's the truth. Hey, I'm going to repent. I'm going to make you mad. I ain't going to repent. <laughs> that man talking about my business. <laughs> you make you happy glad or fight mad. <laughs> I ain't trying to make nobody fight mad. Let's get happy glad. Amen. Happy. Hey. Happy. Verse 27. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. For I say unto you, Among those that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. But he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. And all the people that heard him and the publicans justified God. Didn't justify men, didn't justify themselves, didn't justify their sin. They justified God. Being baptized with the baptism of John. This is our future judge speaking here. This is Jesus. He's our future judge. But the Pharisees, the successful religious leaders, they're very successful people. They're very wealthy religious leaders. The Pharisees and the lawyers representing the very highly educated, successful lawyers rejected. Everybody say rejected. Rejected the counsel of God against themselves being not baptized of him. That's our future judge speaking right here. The future judge saying you reject the counsel of God when you refuse to get baptized. Because it's God's counsel that says get baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Now let's go to Acts chapter 19. This is something new. Here are some people that were baptized with the baptism of John. And Paul said, Paul said, And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. We never heard of any, any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. Jesus said that we didn't reject the counsel of God. We got baptized under John. And what did Peter, Paul say? Then Paul, then said Paul, John very baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on Jesus, should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. See, John prepared the way for Jesus' name. John was baptizing folk unto repentance, preparing them to get baptized in Jesus' name. And when they read this, they were mad. And when they read this, they start fighting. And when they read this, they would beat Paul. And when they read this, they justified themselves. And when they heard this, they rejected Paul and said, get away from me, Paul. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They didn't resist it. They didn't reject it. They didn't say, I've been baptized by John. I don't need to be baptized anymore. They said, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. They obeyed. So when we hear the word of God, don't resist it. Don't deny it. Obey it. Don't get fight mad about it. But get happy glad and say, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my father, not my brother, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Is it you? Is it you out there? Somebody I talked to over the airways. Somebody's calling me right now. I don't know if they're watching me and, and trying to call in right now, but I can't talk to you right now on the phone, but I can talk to you right now. 
If you've never been baptized in Jesus' name, today is your opportunity. Just say, Lord, I repent of my sins. The word found me today. Would you forgive me? Would you come into my heart? Would you deliver me from my sins? Pray the prayer of repentance. And then say, I'm willing to get baptized in Jesus' mighty name. I'm willing to be baptized in the name of the one who died for me. And let him fill me with the gift of the Holy Ghost. If that's you out there, come to 713 North J.P. Wright Loop Road. We got water in our pool. And I'll be glad to baptize you in that powerful name of Jesus Christ. Well, we're going to pray with you right now. He's still trying to call me. I can't talk right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm preaching. <laughs> Precious Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray the prayer of faith for those who heard your word. Help us to keep your words, O oh God. Help us to follow your words, O oh God. Help us to love your words, O oh God. Help us to do your word, O oh God. For faith comes by the word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Oh God, we want to please you today. Bless those who heard the word. Give them a mind to repent and get baptized in your name and fill with the gift of the Holy Ghost. And you give the praise, the honor, and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless you. And we are expecting our great God to do great things for us. Great power and great grace. Acts chapter 4, verse 33. God bless y'all.